Good evening, Joanne, Trisha, God bless you. Good evening, Bill. Amen. God bless you, Sharon. Eddie, God bless you. Amen. Good evening, Joanne. Good evening, Angela. Lauren, God bless you all. Amen. Y'all forgive my lateness. <clears throat> I've been running all day today. God bless you, Andrea. Andrea. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. I've been running all t today and just recently got home not too long ago and um, had to cook and all those other things. And so, y'all forgive my tardiness tonight. I wanted to start <clears throat> at 8 o'clock exactly, but I wasn't able to do that. And so, um, good evening. Please take this opportunity to share the video with your friends or to let your friends know that we're on so that we could begin and everybody can get the full scope of what we're talking about tonight. And, and we're going to get started momentarily. And so God bless each and every one of you. Good evening, Barbara. God bless you. <clears throat> uh, yes, Lauren. Yes, just something basic, baked chicken and rice and vegetables. And so God, God bless you all. Amen. And so let's begin in prayer, asking God for wisdom, knowledge, and ultimately understanding for truly, good evening, Barbara, we need understanding of God's holy word, for truly God is worthy of all praise. And so let's begin in prayer, asking God for wisdom. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us this opportunity to pray to seek your face, Lord God, to learn more about your truths, your wisdom, your knowledge. Father, to learn more about your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would have your way tonight and that you would give us free flow. Allow your people to hear your truth, Lord God. I pray that you would penetrate the hearts of every watcher. And that, Father, as they listen and watch, Lord God, and as we search the scriptures together, Father, we pray that you would open up our eyes and our ears, that we might see and hear what you have to say unto us. And, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for your word is truth. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And we glorify your name because apart from you, we can do nothing. But with you, by you, and through you, we can do all things through Christ our Lord that strengthens us. And so, Father, have your way tonight with those who are watching and those who will be watching hereafter. I pray, God, that your favor would rest upon them like a shield and that, Father, you would give them grace, give them knowledge, give them strength. Father, give them revelation. In the name of Jesus, open up their understanding, Father, greatly and greater. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And we thank you for your word, for we see it as the absolute truth. Your word is inerrant. It is infallible. Your word is just. It is pure. Your word is righteous. And by your word are your servants warned. So, Father, forgive us of all sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that we might be able to speak and to hear of your spirit. We thank you right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so God bless you all. If I didn't get to uh, see your name as I was praying, uh, good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining with me again tonight. You guys are diligent. You guys are faithful. I thank God for you. Know this, that the word of God said God will reward each of us according to our faithfulness. And, and it, ultimately, that means our faithfulness towards him but it's also towards the things that he has led us to. Uh, when we are faithful, my God, the word of God says that, you know, um, the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But another scripture says that every prize is given to the one who endures to the end. There are no second place prizes. There are no, um, you know, uh, come come behind lately prizes. You know, it, it is something that we have to work. Thank you, Tricia. God bless you. Keep praying for me, please. Um, because it's not easy. 
It's not easy. And, and those of you who are faithful, you know that it's not easy. There's so many things that come up to conflict against being faithful. There's so many things that come to to make you feel like, you know what, I'm going to do something different. And And I know that in my life, my God, if I could tell you how time management is essential for me, it is essential, which means that I can't be involved with everything. I can't do everything. Um, I can't go everywhere. I can't participate in everything. Why? Because it takes away time and it affects down the line everything that I'm able to do. But it is my endeavor to be faithful to the God who called me. It is my endeavor to be faithful to um, the mission and the ministry that he has given me. And um, <laughs> no, Laura, no, no, Lauren, we don't need two of me. No, ma'am. Um, God is, the Holy Spirit has a full-time job with the one of me. And so <laughs> we need, we need, I think I need two of the Holy Ghost, you know, but no, he's a sufficient, he's sufficient enough. And, um, and so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for those of you who are faithful. I'm grateful for those of you who have been following me this this long time, you know, that I've been doing this. And, and really, I only did it to share the gospel. That's it. Because I found that there were many people who, um, who uh, had, you know, uh, a knowledge of God or some who were saved and backslid, people who were hurting people who got offended, and they were not coming to the church. So, um, but they were on Facebook. You know, there was a lot of people, and, and today, if you look around, there's a lot of people who's on Facebook or other social platforms, but they are not coming to the normal or traditional things that we considered where you should go, like church, Bible study, prayer meeting, things like that. So, what some of y'all need to do, if you are a prayer warrior, get on Facebook and start praying. If you are a singer, you don't have to wait for your particular Sunday to sing. Get on Facebook and start worshiping. Um, put it out there because you are disseminating the seed, the word of God. I know that when we look around, we see so many people that use the words, uh, terms, out of context, you know, like for example, when every time we hear about, well, a, a lot of times that we hear about seed time and harvest, and a lot of time we hear about planting your seed in good soil, you know, most folks think you're talking about money because that's what's being taught. But the Word of God teaches that the seed is the Word of God, it is the seed. The word of God that must be planted in good ground and the good soil is the heart. Um, you know, it, it is important because even when it comes to giving, when it comes to giving, you know, the word of God, yes, it talks about tithes and offering, but the word of God says, let each and every person give as they have purposed in their heart. And it says, let them give willingly and not by constraint. Or by compulsion. I mean, if you really understand that, and, and a lot of people, you know, they're educated, they're knowledgeable, but they don't want to talk about what does that mean. By compulsion means for me to compel you to give. Um, by, by um, you know, um, by restraint or constraint is for me to lay a guilt trip on you that, oh my God, if you don't give, you're going to be cursed. And, and what happens is that you have a lot of people that's given money to organizations, to churches, to ministries, but their heart is not in it. And God rewards you according to what's in your heart. He don't reward you according to the amount of money that you put in. He awards you according to your heart. Because if that's the case, there's a lot of people planting money into stuff. And yeah. You may get money back because there's a certain principle of finance, you know, um, and, and this is all relative to what we're talking tonight. There's a principle of finance that that says that if you invest money and you invest it wisely, yeah, you're going to get money back. Also, human nature. Human nature is if you sit around people that are always talking finance or always talking blessings or always talking entrepreneurship or always talking success, 
If you're sitting around people like that all the time, then yes, guess what? It's going to transform the way you think. And so you're going to start making better choices. But that doesn't mean that your blessing came from God. It, it could mean that you just use better choices. I mean, let's be honest. If you invest your money in good portfolios, then you're going to get a good return. If you get a good return, that doesn't mean that God gave it to you. That just means that you've done the right thing. You know, if you invest your money in businesses and those businesses, if you look at them and examine them and examine the perspectives correctly, then guess what? If the business is successful, you've gained success. And, and the mistake is, is to think that every success comes from God. Let's not forget. Satan told Jesus, he told Jesus, he says, all the kingdoms of the world and its glory I'll give to you if you bow down. And so there's a lot of people, that's why the word of God said, a lot of people are going to say, I did this and I did that in your name. And God is going to say, I never knew you. So the, we, one of the, the, the purposes that, that God has given me is, is really to study the word of God in such a way and to make it as plain as possible so that people are following Jesus and not following a man. So that people are following the word of God and not following my ideas or my dreams or my visions. Right. I want you because if God has given me a vision, if God has given me a dream, it must connect to his word for, for the even Christ said, he says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will not speak of himself. He said, but he's going to speak of me. In other words, he's going to remind you of what he has told you. So there's a lot of misnomers and misconceptions when it comes to ministry. And so tonight we want to talk about your gifts. Because if you remember when we was talking, this whole segment that we were talking about the cross, we were talking about the cross, but we never spoke about the gifts. We talk about the burdens. We talk about your challenges. We talk about your battles. We talk about your warships. We talked about all those things. But in the midst of this cross that God has given you, God has given you a gift. And for some of us, um, because we don't know who we are and because we don't know what God has given us and why he has given us, we sometimes use the gifts incorrectly or we use it for the wrong purposes. Right. Like, for example, if someone has the gift of giving, if they have the gift of giving, um, they can make the mistake of keep saying yes to everybody who asks. Right. Having the gift of giving doesn't mean that you lack wisdom and it doesn't mean that you just give without purpose. And it's the same thing. Um, put this in your notes. My gift must be used on purpose. It has to be used on purpose and my gift must be used in obedience to the move of the Spirit. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people are not finding success in what they're able to do. Because when the enemy comes up against them, remember, it's only the Spirit of the Lord that lifts up a standard. It's the Spirit of the Lord that lifts up a battle axe or a shield against the tidal flow of the enemy. And so if you just use your gift and just use it, and like, for example, I hear people that are teachers, people um, who are teachers and, and they are, and yes, Lauren, you give from the heart, but you got to make sure that wisdom and obedience to the Holy Spirit is in play because, you know, sometimes let's, let's be honest. There are some times that even me as, as a person who is gifted to teach, Right. There are sometimes that people will ask me a question and I have an answer. I have a thought. I have something that's relative to the word to say. And the Holy Spirit will say, be quiet. Don't say anything. The Holy Spirit will show me that their answer, their question is not based upon a sincere desire, but their question is a diversion. There's many times when I've been teaching online, those of you who have been following you know, um, I thought you shouldn't care about what they, what they do with it. No, 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 no. You have to understand, Lord. Just understand what I'm saying first. It's important to know that God doesn't, like, give you an example. I'll give you a perfect example. Jesus came to save souls. Jesus came to point the way to, to the Father. A rich young ruler 
a rich young ruler came in, right, um, and said, what must I do to be saved? Now, you would think coming to Jesus is the perfect one to find out what must I do to be saved. When Jesus expressed to him what he must do exactly to be saved, this man didn't want to do it. Jesus didn't run behind him and said, hey, let me, let me show you a different way. No, you have to understand that sometimes, right, God will tell you, turn that thing off. Give you example, another example. Daniel was a seer. Daniel could see, he could see through prophecy. But there were times when God gave him a vision and God told him, seal up the vision. Do not talk about it. The Apostle Paul, the, the Lord showed Apostle Paul things in the third heaven. But the Lord told him, do not say it. That when Apostle Paul was talking about marriage, he says that those who will get married will have trouble in the flesh. He says, but I spare you. In other words, I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm not going to tell you what the problem is. I'm not going to tell you what. It. So guess what? Um, I want to share this with you, and, and I want to give this to you with all the wisdom and knowledge that I have. Guess what? Saying no is also being spiritual. Um, listen, it is not God's will that a believer say yes to everything. It is not God's will that a believer takes part in everything. There's some things you have to, yes, Lauren, there's some things it is good to hold back. There are some things that you got to say no to. There are some things that you got to say I can't to. This is why the word of God says that in everything that we say, we should say, if the Lord wills, I will do blank, 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 blank. And, and somehow, don't y'all know that people in the world think that Christians are gullible. And, and any time they want you to do something, they will play the Christian brother card, the Christian sister card, the Christian, come on, you know, what would Jesus do? They'll play that thing on you to manipulate you to do what they want you to do. But guess what? There is not always, remember, Jesus spoke to the woman and said, it is not right to give the children's bread to dogs. OK, there was another point in time where the Holy Spirit told the disciples, do not preach the gospel here. Don't go to this area to preach the gospel. Don't go to that area to preach the gospel. Listen, I want you to understand, because remember, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about over the last few weeks and, and really last since I've been doing this, is really explaining to you all that it is so vitally essential for you to mature, for you to develop, for you to stop behaving as children, to stop behaving as naive people. We must understand, the scripture says we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We understand how Satan works, and Satan will oftentimes, like for example, you will have a family member of yours who will, you know, never come to your church, never visit your church, don't want you to pray, and so like that. But then when they're in trouble, they want you to run to their rescue. And then if you don't, they're like, what kind of Christian are you? Come on, you, you better open up your eyes and see that sometimes people will use your salvation against you. In fact, Jesus' own brothers said to him, if you are, if you're really a prophet, every prophet should make himself known to his people. So you need to go and do it. And Jesus had to tell him, my time is not yet. I'm here to tell you, you need to know when to say no. You need to K-N-O-W know when to say N-O, no. You need to know how to say, not now, not this time, no sir, no ma'am. And not because you are being mean or, or you're being angry or frustrated, but no. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God, and the, and the drive of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, amen, Kiana, the Holy Spirit will tell you when to say no. 
And, and when we talk about spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts are given to every believer. Every one of you who are saved. What do I mean by saved? You're regenerated. What do I mean by regenerated? You are a person who has the spirit of God within you. How do you know you have the spirit of God? Well, 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12 says, And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who has not the Son of God has not life. Now, what does that mean? When you have the Son of God within you now, Christ the Lord is not on this earth as far as in human form. He's not on this earth. And so because of that, how do I have Christ in me? How do I have Christ in me? What happens is that the life of Christ become manifested in my doings. Okay? What do I mean by that? Whereas Rodney would have the natural tendency to behave in certain ways, Christ, without my mama being here, without my daddy being here, without my overseer or my pastor watching, without y'all watching, Pastor Rodney will behave himself like Christ. He will behave himself like Christ was. See, there's a lot of people think that you're a Christian because when you go to church and when you hang around Christians, you sing and praise the Lord. But what happens when you're by yourself? What happens when you're all by yourself? That shows what's in you. Because let's look at St. John. St. John chapter 1. Okay, I want you to turn with me. Uh, to St. John chapter 1. And um, when you get to St. John chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. St. John chapter 1. And if you look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So in Christ, in God, how do we know it's in God? Because the scripture says in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Now if you look at verse 14, it says, And the Word, the Word that was in the beginning, um, it became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we know that the word that, if you keep reading, it says John bore witness of him. So who was the one that John bore witness of? Um, it was Christ, Christ Jesus the Lord, right? So when Christ came, the scripture says, in Christ was life, and that life was the light of men. Now, um, Christ says, if anyone believes in me, he shall never walk in darkness. When you have, and, and I don't mean to be offensive to anyone, but I mean to explore and give you revelation. If you're not right with God, this is your opportunity to get right with him. Okay, so it's not your opportunity to feel like, oh, my God, Pastor Rodney is talking about me. Oh, my God, you know, I feel like he's dogging me out. No, no, no. Don't feel that way. For the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. So when you feel the correction of the Holy Spirit, um, it is for you to know that God is loving you right now. Right. So if you feel the spirit to, um, giving you questions in your mind. If you feel the spirit is, 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 is causing you to doubt certain things that you believed at one time or another, right? If you feel the Spirit is, is, is causing you to kind of weigh back and forth, it's because the Spirit is trying to show you that there's something not right, okay? So when you have a proper relationship with God, what it gives you, it gives you life. Not just natural life, not just human life, not just male or female life, but it gives you the life of God. The only way we can do the things of God is if we have his life. That's why the Bible says if anyone doesn't have the spirit of God, they're none of his. They don't belong to him, 
Remember, Jesus spoke against the Pharisees who thought that their father was God. He even told Nicodemus in chapter 3 of St. John, he says, Nicodemus, don't you know that you must be born again? He said, because that which is of flesh will always be flesh. And what we see oftentimes on display around us is flesh. You know, I, I'm, I'm walking very carefully with this because I need you to understand this foundational truth before we get into to giftings, right? Um, a lot of uh, uh, preaching that we get across the pulpits or maybe online or, or even, you know, on television and stuff like that, a lot of preaching is based upon psychology. It's based upon psychology. It's based upon demographics. It's based upon a knowledge of your audience. Like, for example, right, if you go somewhere to preach for a woman's day, right, let's say it's a woman's day, right, and you have been asked to preach at this woman's day, right, if you've been asked to preach at this woman's day, what generally is stuff that you do? What do you study for? You study trying to find a woman. That's psychology. Because you've been asked to preach for a woman's day, you're coming with a subject that you believe is relative to women. And to women, rather. And, and most times, most people don't ask God, God, what is it you want me to preach? There's been times that I've been sent to to preach for a usher's day and the Lord will give me a word for the whole church. And guess what? The ushers will find encouragement because the Holy Spirit will not work out of order, right? The Holy Spirit doesn't work out of order. And so when you, when, if you're going on assignment to preach somewhere, the Holy Spirit will touch the issues that need to be touched with, but he'll deal with everything in the house. And so there's been times that I went to a women's day and the Holy Spirit has led me to preach about men. There's been other times that I've gone to a men's day and the Holy Spirit has, has, has caused me to preach about uh, repentance. Yes, yes. Um, there's many times that the Holy Spirit has sent me to a pastor's anniversary to encourage the pastor. And there's been other times the Holy Spirit has sent me and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me to expose certain things in the house. Okay, um, and I've never found uh, any time, and I want y'all to hear me correctly, so I want you to hear very, very sternly and very carefully. I've never had a time where the Holy Spirit has given me a message, even if I didn't understand why that message was coming. I've never had a time where I had to preach or teach and that message wasn't impactful and that message wasn't life changing. Because here's the point is that when we um, select a message based upon an audience that we're going to, it is because we are using psychology. We're using psychology and philosophy. We're using this study of, we're using a study of, of the environment. God bless you, Wendy. Welcome. We're using this study of this environment and we're looking at the environment and we're trying to think what is a good message for that environment. And guess what, my friends, you don't know. You don't know. See, God knows the hearts and God knows who's going to be in attendance. So much of what we see coming across is things that are based upon what they believe is going to be good for you to know at that moment what they believe is going to be impactful. But sometimes some of these messages are not rooted in, God, what do you want me to say? What message do you have me to give without us uh, introducing any of our intellect? OK, so so one of the things that I try to do is when I teach, uh, I do a lot of teaching with leaders. I do a lot of teaching with elders, a lot of teaching, even at my church. Um, we do a lot of teaching with the elders. We do a lot of teaching with the leaders and and I'm constantly dealing with them on this nuance of what most people don't talk about. And that is the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit. Listen, when, when you have the life of Christ within you, the Holy Spirit will give you the life of God 
and you recognize I cannot live this kind of life because God reveals to you. He gives you light. He gives you understanding. When you come into the kingdom of God, you recognize that I need his presence and you long for his presence. David said, as the deer pants for the waters, so my soul longs after you. But what oftentimes we found is because men and women, they want titles. Men and women want prestige. Men and women want position. They want power. Then guess what? In working with men, men says, well, oh, if you want this office, then you got to have all this stuff. So now you have the, the person who once had a strong heart. Yes, a legger. The Holy Spirit is the most ignored person in many places. And not and, and I'm not even going to say churches. I'm going to say in many people who say that they are children of the Most High God. And so what happens is you get caught up in this rhetoric that I got to have all these papers and all these things to show that I'm valuable. I see people come to church and they read this whole doxology of all of their accomplishments. Listen. I don't want to know all the stuff you accomplish. I want to, I, if we invited you, we believe by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit has chosen you to give a message. All I want you to do is tell me what the Lord says. Just speak of the Holy Spirit. Speak of his move. You know, many times in the, in the Bible days, you know, folks would come into the temple and they would sit in the temple and then somebody would stand up. Somebody would stand up and grab the word, turn its pages, and read from the word and be profound at it. And they would read the word of God under the unctioning. And many there were some that didn't have the unctioning. For even the, um, the people said that Jesus taught not as the scribes, but he taught as one with power and authority. Right, So we knew that there were fake teachers. And even Paul said there will be false preachers and false teachers among you. right? But, but here's the point. When someone comes with the anointing, it's like I've heard many singers, many people who can sing. But when I've heard other people who are not as skillful in voice, but they are anointed and that song pierces the heart. It doesn't just entertain the flesh. And I know people who shout and jump and dance in church. And then as soon as they get out of church, if you ask them, what was the name of the sermon? Where was the scripture taken from? They got to go, um, I don't, um, he was talking about, uh, that's because your flesh was entertained. Your flesh was educated, but not your spirit. Because you never miss and forget anything that impacts your spirit, that impacts your heart. Okay? And so when we talk about spiritual gifts, I want you to understand that God gives every believer, every born-again believer, he gives them spiritual, at least one spiritual gift. At least one. And many of you have multiple gifts, right? And these spiritual gifts are supernatural abilities given by God and empowered by God to perform a work among the church or in the church. Your gift is not for you to make a name for yourself. Your gift is to edify others. It's a supernatural ability that allows for you to, to edify the body of Christ so that all of us are necessary components, not just the pastor, not just the teacher, not just the preacher, not just the elders, but all of us are necessary components in order to, to build and encourage and edify the church. This is why the word of God, when it speaks about, when it was talking about uh, uh, speaking in tongues, it was saying that, does everybody have a tongue? Does everybody have a prophecy? Does everybody has a, you know, it's, it's not, you don't, you know, you don't go into the church and just use your gift without thinking. You got to think, 
if, if, if someone is speaking tongues, the word of God said, let it be by two and no more than three, and then wait for the interpretation. Why? So that everybody might be edified. But there's a whole lot of uh, um, just confusion oftentimes in circles because everybody is doing what they want, trying to show how gifted, how good, how powerful they are. And what's happening is that what's happening is that people are being led. If you are one of these people, then people are being led to you, but they have no confidence in God. They have confidence in what you say about God, but they don't have confidence in themselves of what God has to say. And you have to understand, if Christ was like that, then the time that he spent with the disciples would be wasted. Because when he left them, they wouldn't know what to do. And all of us, I've shared with you so many times, all of us have a season or a dispensation. All of us have a time that God has allowed it to, allotted to us in order to minister. And so when we are in the body of Christ, you must make sure that your time is efficient and effective. And that time has to be given with wisdom. That's why when we started this, this whole segment, when we started, we remember the scripture in Psalms that said, teach us to number our days so that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. We must use wisdom to know that we don't have forever. And so because of that, I have to make sure that what God has given me, I am a proper steward of the gift that God has given me and that I will bring back to him more than what he gave. So God gives me a gift. I should be bringing God the souls and the people and my gift should be matured and developed and my gift should be used in various entities and various platforms. Why? Because this gift is not just because where you go, where you go, it's not just for Sunday. But where you go on your job, there are believers. There are believers who may be backsliders. There are believers who may be um, weak in their faith. There, so your gift can be used on your job. And the word of God says when you use your gift or your gift, your gift will make room for you. So when you use your gift faithfully, when you faithfully use that gift, like I shared many times, that, you know, th this teaching method that I'm using now, I didn't just start it when Facebook Live came on. No, but way before Facebook, when, when there was nothing but, and way before, you know, a lot of the, the social platforms that are available today, when, when I had nothing but email, when I had nothing but a phone call, when I had, look, I'm dating myself, when we had a rotary phone, I was turning that dial, calling people and answering questions and studying with people on the phone. When, when as a young person, we used to go to different churches and we would minister at different churches and then after church, the young people would say, hey, let's go get something to eat. Let's go out and get ice cream or let's go out and get dessert or whatever it case would be. And we would go to restaurants and we would get a table and there'd be 15 of us, 20 of us, 30 of us. And we would get these tables, sometimes it'd be four of us or five of us. And we would get this, um, this, this table and we would sit at this table. And as we sat at the table, somebody would talk about the sermon. Somebody would talk about what we heard today or what they read in the word. And we would start talking about it. And back then, I didn't have no title. I wasn't looking for no title. But back then, I had a sincere desire to study the word of God. I had a sincere desire to know the word of God. And, and I'll tell you this. I remember uh, one of the, the, the first guys who, who accepted Christ from me ministering to him. I'll never forget this, and, and y'all know I'll always be truthful to you, and I'll always be humble before you. I don't believe in, in sugarcoating, and I don't believe in, in not saying what God placed or the Holy Spirit dredges in my mind to say. And so the Holy Spirit just brought this memory back to me, and I want to share it with you. And it wasn't good for me, but it's the truth. I remember um, that the first young man and his name was Derek, the first young man that um, I helped to lead to Christ, and he was led to Christ to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. When I was a young man, 
Um, and we used to share the word. We used to go around. We used to sing together and stuff like that. And then when I fell in sin, when I fell in sin and had a baby out of wedlock, right? When I had a baby out of wedlock, I'll never forget what this young man said to me. He said to me, you know what? If there was anybody I thought would never fall, it would be you. And that broke my heart. It broke my heart because I did not know back then the impact that I was making. I did not know how there were people who was counting on me that was looking to me. And I'm saying this to some of you because some of you may not realize that though you don't have a title, though you don't have a position, though you're not the keynote speaker or anything like that, you may be surprised who's looking at your life. Who's looking at how you respond? That's why you can't go on Facebook and say just anything. Why? Because God has given you a spiritual gift inside that is designed to edify the body of Christ. And so you have to be ever so careful. Um, yes, we all fall, Chris. That's true. And Jesus picks us up. But let's not forget, for some people when they fall, look at David. David fell. He was a man after God's own heart. He fell, but he also killed her husband. And though God picked him up, God, God didn't resurrect her husband. And, and here now this woman was pregnant, Bathsheba was pregnant. And though she was pregnant and she gave birth to a child, God's judgment because of David's fall said that the child would die. And because God picked up David, guess what? He didn't resurrect the child. The child died. And so many times we make the mistake of thinking because God is merciful and God forgave us, then that's the only thing we have to be concerned about. But my friends, we got to open our hearts to realize that our falling sometimes affects other people. Our falling sometimes affects other people that are looking to us because their faith is not strong enough to be connected to God. And so that's why now I'm ever so careful about what I say and what I do and how I act and how I behave. Why? Because there may be somebody who is still young in their faith, who has not gotten, you know, their heart and mind fully connected to God, hasn't, hasn't totally surrendered to God, but they're trusting the words that come out of Pastor Rodney's mouth. They're trusting the, the, the sermons that I preach. And so I cannot give them philosophy and psychology. My God, help me, Holy Spirit. Help us to be true. Help us to be faithful. Help us, Lord God, to, to do your good pleasure. Because here's the problem. The problem is so many people when I look at um, pastors or maybe a minister or an elder or a bishop that falls, it breaks my heart when I hear their church fall apart. Because sometimes I'm questioning and saying, Lord, what happened? Did they connect people to you? Or were they an idol in those people's minds? Did people see them on the same level as you, God? For let me let me help y'all out. The word of God says there's only one mediator between God and me or God and you. And that's Jesus. Not Pastor Rodney, not Bishop so and so, not Apostle so and so. No, no, no. The only thing that is between you and God is Christ. And I know a lot of people out there might want to make you feel like you absolutely need them in your life. And I'm telling you, if you put faith in man and God forbid they fall or God forbid they die or God forbid God moves them on, it's going to rattle your faith. Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't come with excellency of speech. He says, why? Because I didn't want your faith to rest in the wisdom of men. But I want it to be in the power of God. That's what Christ did. He was connecting the disciples to the knowledge of who the Heavenly Father was. He was telling them about the kingdom of God. He was telling them about the ways of God. So that when he left, he could give them instruction 
Keep following the Lord. That's why the book of Acts says it is the Acts of the Apostles. That's the correct title. The Acts of the Apostles. Because, yeah, we know what Jesus did, but now it's time for the, the Apostles to live. Now it's time for them to serve. Now it's time for them to minister. Now it's time for them to lead God's people. And these are the men and women of God who, who, who shared the gospel of Christ and said, Christ has given us a way that we ought to follow. And now we present those same things to you. And so when men started to exalt the apostles and started to lift them up, the apostles would rip their clothes and said, no, we are men just like you. You, the word of God tells us that even Elijah was a man of light passions like us. But what I see too much is that there's an exalt and an, an exaltation, if you will, or an exalting of gifts and not exalting the gifter. There's this. There's this magnification of gifts and not realize that gifts are given by and empowered by God for service. For service. It's not meant for me to show, like for example, if God has given me the gift of teaching, it is not meant for me to show how smart I am. Or that I seem to have an answer. Because for some things, I don't know. One of the most profound scriptures, and you know what, let's turn to it. Um, that really, um, one of the most profound scriptures that really helped me. Um, let me, let me see, uh, let me, let me pull it up. Because it helped me um, to, to stay humble, to stay humble and to realize that just because I'm gifted doesn't mean I have everything. Do y'all hear me? Just because I'm gifted doesn't mean... I have everything. Just because, I'm going to say that again, just because I'm gifted doesn't mean I have everything. And there's a lot of people um, who think that their gifts are limitless and that they are just free to do whatever they want and not realize there are some times that God has used me in the gift of with the gift of healing. And there's been other times where I've went places and I would pray. Before I pray for that person, I'm praying in my spirit to the Lord, asking the Lord for direction. And there's been times the Lord has told me, this person is going to die. My gift means nothing. My gift cannot pull them back if God says this is their end. <clears throat> That's why Jesus, when he was talking about Lazarus, he says, Lazarus sleep. But he says that he's glad he wasn't there because this thing was for the glory of God. So God had glory to be revealed in Lazarus' resurrection. There was glory. And what Jesus was speaking, Jesus was speaking by the allowances of the Father. Because there was glory that God was going to get out of Lazarus' resurrection. So, now, I want you to turn with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings... Chapter 4. Okay. When you get to 2 Kings. Chapter 4. 
This this scripture, if you really study it, this scripture is going to help you to stay humble. Okay? Second Corinthians, I mean second second Corinthians, you hear me? Second Kings chapter four. And um, let's look at verse. Let's start from verse 17. And we're going to read down. We're going to read down uh, to verse 27. So 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 17 to 27. I want you to listen, listen to this. Listen to this very carefully and look at what it says. It says, so beginning at verse 17, it says, But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha has had said to her, or had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. The child died. Okay? And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, Mind you, this woman, yes, Mia, chapter 4, this woman just lost her son. Her son just died. She laid her son in the bedroom of the man of God that her and her husband made for him when he's traveling back and forth, right? Okay, when she laid their son in the bed, she told her husband, I'm going to the man of God. I'll be right back. The husband said, why are you going? The husband didn't even know that the child was dead. The husband said, why are you going? She says, don't worry, it's well. Everything is good. Look at what happens. Then she saddled a donkey, verse 24, and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. In other words, I want you to burn rubber and don't slow down. No matter how rough the ride is, don't slow down unless I tell you. Right? Verse 25. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gehazi, he said, look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her. Look at what he says and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? And is it well with the child? And she answered the servant Gehazi and said, it's well. In other words, everything is good. Verse 27. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi, the servant, came near to push her away. But look what Elisha said. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And look what he says. The Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Listen. Let me tell you why that's so powerful. That is so powerful because Elisha was a seer. Now listen, Wendy, I want you to hear this because this is key. Elisha was gifted by God as a prophet and as a seer. He can prophesy and he can see. He had power and anointing. Elisha was somebody who, when Elijah was his former leader, Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. The Bible says his mantle fell from the chariot. Elisha caught it, and he said, where is the God of Elisha, Elijah? And he slapped the water, and he divided the water into two Places and he walked across the water and people saw that he had the power of Elijah. He told Elijah because Elijah said, ask what you want and I'll give it to you um, before the Lord takes me out. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. So this man, Elisha, had a double portion of Elijah spirit, right? 
But yet and still, although he was a seer, God hid some things from him. I, don't, I, I, I can't emphasize that more. Just because you're gifted in a certain area doesn't mean God gives you everything in that area. There's some things that God will hide from you because there's a purpose and a reason that's only from God. Look at Christ our Lord. Christ our Lord says, when the, when the disciple says, when are you going to restore the kingdom? And Christ said, it is not it is not for you to know that. He says the only one that knows when the kingdom will be restored is the Heavenly Father. The time is in his hands. Come on, people of God. We, we got to stop being ignorant to the word of God. There's some things God will not show you. There's some things that you will ask God, God, why did this happen to me? And God won't tell you. You just got to trust him. You just got to lean upon him. That's why the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So guess what? There's sometimes that God will cause me to walk and God is not going to explain to me why. There's sometimes God will do something in the universe. There's sometimes God will do something in the atmosphere. And guess what? None of us know why he's doing it because God is not telling us there's certain things that God has put in in his own providence in his own dominion in his own purpose and plan and guess what we got to be okay with that and I'm a I'm going to tell you people of God that if you are going to somebody who knows every single thing Be careful. If you're following somebody who knows every single thing, every single thing, and every single thing they know, God told them, they heard, God told them, every single thing, my friends, I'm telling you, you better be very careful because of the fact of that it will cause you to rest in what they say in every single thing and you will make them an idol and God will allow them to fall. God will show their flaws. He will show their humanity. That's why when the disciples healed the man at the gate called Beautiful, when Peter told him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee, rise and walk. Right. And when the people was trying to figure out how did they was made whole, how how was this guy made whole? How was he able? And, and the guy said, he says, listen, he says they did it. And when they came to Peter and them and it was like, wow, look what you did. And Peter and them said, wait a minute, wait, stop, pop, stop, stop. Peter said, hold up a second. He says, do you think that this man was made whole by our own power? He said, No. He said, but this man was made whole through the name of Jesus. It is his name that has power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Spirit. When Philip went down to Gaza, he didn't just go down to Gaza because he was going on vacation. No, the Holy Spirit said, Philip, go arise, go to Gaza. And Philip didn't say, well, what you want me to go there for? Do uh, you want me to do a conference? you want me to do uh, a revival? What do you want me to do? No, take your behind and go to Gaza. He went to Gaza and when he got there, the spirit said, go attach yourself. Go close to that chariot over there, that particular chariot. Go right close to that chariot. And when he got there, the Holy Spirit stopped talking. And then he heard the Ethiopian union reading the scriptures and he said, do you understand what you're reading? Listen. People of God, I'm here to tell you tonight that your gifting is used by God. And the next time we get together, hopefully God's willing on Monday, we're going to talk about the various gifts and how they can be used. But I want you to understand that your gift is a gift. It is your gift is 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 sort of like um, how can I say this to you? Your gift is um, a measure of God's grace. It is God's grace that's given to you. God has graced you with this gift, this gift. He's graced you with this gift to fulfill um, 
his purposes. The word of God says, a fool is known by the multitude of their words. And God has no pleasure in fools. It says, so therefore let your words be few. How many of us have spent so much time says, I know my redeemer lives. And guess what? There's nothing the devil could do to turn my heart from God. I love him with all my heart and I will follow him to the day I die. Then you get fired from your job and you're falling out. You're falling out and you're losing control. Then a husband or wife cheats on you and you're losing control. What happened to what you said? That's why the word of God said it's better for you never to make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it because God is going to require it at your hand. There's a lot of people that said, came to me and said, pastor, you're right. You know, pastor, I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to submit myself under your authority. And they still don't. You know what? I stopped going after them and stopped beating them over the head because guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to give you a desert experience in your spirit. You're not going to have the free flow of the spirit because why? You're running your mouth too much and you're saying stuff that the Holy Spirit never told you to say. This is one of the reasons why in my life, people of God, I constantly tell people I am not ashamed to tell you if I failed, if I messed up, if I made a mistake, if I if I chose to do something wrong. I'll tell you. Uh, that's why when some of you had said in the beginning, oh, Pastor Rodney, you're faithful, you're this, and we need two of you. And I say, oh, no, you don't need two of me because the Holy Spirit has enough time trying to keep me together. He has enough time trying to keep my mind right. Listen, I'm not like any anybody else that's going to praise and promote Rodney. That's not why God called me out of darkness. God didn't call me out of darkness for me to promote myself. God didn't call me out of darkness for me to tell people I'm the in all be no all. I'm the shiznick. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. God didn't call me to do that. God called me out of darkness to let people know of the God who can save you. The God who can help you. The, the, the Holy Spirit who can lead you. The Holy Spirit who can guide you. The Holy Spirit who can tell you things that you have yet to know. The Holy Spirit will tell you to stand still. I got this battle. The battle is not yours, but it's mine. And you have to stand still and watch what God does. That's what I've been called to do. And so forever, that's my prayer. God, help me forever to point people to you, not to me. Not to for one vision, not to for one global, not to for one fit, but to point people to you. Listen, I don't care what church you go to. When I minister to people, I don't care. If you want to come to my church, please ask the Lord because you can't stay at my church unless the Lord tells you that's where you belong. Because listen, this pastor, I'm going to get inside of you. I'm going to get inside your heart. I'm going to get inside your mind. I'm going to get inside your spirit. If you start acting kind of funny, if I see you treat and believe is wrong, I'm going to come at you. Why? Because it is my endeavor to point you to God and to show you that this is not God-like. The way you're behaving is not God-like. And many of my members, some who are online tonight, will tell you there's been plenty of times that I pissed them off. They'll tell you that. There's been plenty of times that I've disappointed them. There's been plenty of times that they said, oh Lord, you got to help me with this man. But you know what? They're still here. And guess what? They're growing. They're growing. They, they come in the door insecure. They come in the door with hurts and wounds. And guess what? Now they're starting to love again. Now they're growing. Now they're becoming wiser. They're becoming stronger. They're making better choices. Now, you know, whereas before, I, every time we went on street ministry, I had to go out there. And I was doing the talking and I was ministering to the people on the street and they were just standing behind me. But now they go out on their own and they minister on their jobs. They're ministering in text. They're ministering in email. They're ministering uh, over Facebook and they're doing things to lead people to Christ. Because guess what? It's not about Pastor Rodney. It's not about your bishop. It's not about your apostle. It's not about what they can do and what they can see. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about what the Holy Spirit reveals. And I'm here to tell you that too many of y'all are looking for somebody to be your personal genie in the lamp, to be your crystal ball where you could, well, should I go to the mall today? 
uh, uh, should I move to this place today? Uh, should I take the train today? That is a bunch of foolishness. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. He is the one that Christ said, not Pastor Rodney, Christ said, when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead you and, to, and guide you into all truth. So what, what I'm here to do is to point you to God, because if you're not saved, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. So this is why you need somebody to lead you by the hand. This is why you need somebody to show you what to do and, and to show you where to go. Because you don't have that living witness inside. But when you have that living witness inside, you can go anywhere. And if the Holy Spirit don't want you to be there, the Holy Spirit will tell you, get out of here. Don't spend money today. Don't go to the mall today. Don't drive your car today. Stay home today. Don't travel there today. Don't go on vacation. I'll never forget. There was one time, right, when um, I was, and, and I got to once again confess because the Holy Spirit is dredging this in my spirit to say, speak about this. There was one time when um, I was, uh, uh, my, my plan was to go to Florida and I wanted to just go on vacation. I wanted to go to Florida and, <laughs> and I said, I'm going to go to Florida, right? And I heard, I heard in my spirit, the Lord saying, this is not the time for you to go. I heard it, right? But I kept trying to squash that out because I wanted to do what I wanted to do, right? And, you know, when I was going, right, I got on the road and I started driving. And when I started driving, the thought came into my mind and I, I realized that it was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. It was before I left my town, the Holy Spirit said, why don't you go to Walmart and pick up some snacks for your road trip, <laughs> Right? And, and I went, I had to make this U-turn, right? And I made this U-turn. And I thought I made the U-turn properly. But what happened is when I made the U-turn, I didn't see a cop was coming. And I end up cutting in front of him. So, of course, the cop pulled me over. When the cop pulled me over, he pulled me over and he says, is there anything on your license or thing like that? And I said, no. I said, it's good. Right. I said, no problem. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm singing spiritual songs. Right. Because I'm trying to hype myself up about my trip to Florida. But God already told me not to go. The cop came and said that there was a warrant on my license. I said, a warrant for what? And he says, I don't know. He said, but unfortunately, I got to arrest you. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm sitting there going, what? You got to arrest me for what? I ain't got no warrant. He said, well, listen, when you get to the courts, explain to the cops, right? When I got there and I got to the courts, right? Come to find out there was a ticket. There was a parking ticket that I had received. They said I received years ago. I mean, when I first moved into Jersey City, right? And I never paid the parking ticket, right? According to them. And so because of that, they had this warrant on my, on my license that was like, if you find this guy, arrest him, right? <laughs> so, but when they took me, because, you know, they had to take you and put you in jail, right? When they took me and put me in jail, I'm sitting in there, and the Holy Spirit that's within said, you know why you're here, right? <laughs> right? And I said, yeah. I, at that point, I didn't know why I was there. I didn't know, you know, what the warrant was for. I didn't know what it was for. Um, but I was sitting in the, in the jail cell talking, yeah, Lauren, whatever. I was sitting in the, the jail cell talking with the Holy Spirit. And I said, it don't matter the warrant. It wasn't the warrant that brought me here. It was you, Father. It was the Holy Spirit that brought me here. Okay, now be careful, Melinda, and y'all that's, that's jumping on me now because you better make sure you listen to daddy. Okay, don't make a joke. I'm, I'm joking about what happened in my life, but don't you make a joke because if you're not careful, in the same measure you judge somebody else, you will be judged. So be very careful. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, um, so I sat in a jail cell and I was talking to the Holy Spirit and I said, Lord, you're right. Shouldn't have been here. I shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have went down south. 
I shouldn't have traveled. And then I was sitting there thanking God because I'm not saying judgment, Melinda. I'm saying that I want you guys to not make light of somebody else's experience because in essence, when you make light of somebody else's experience and you make a joke of somebody else's experience, that is you not understanding how God works and that the same measure God will work with you. This is, this is important. I'm not offended. I'm not offended at all because, because I, it was a lesson learned for me. It was a lesson learned that, you know, the jail didn't matter. The embarrassment didn't matter. Um, all that mattered was that I knew why I was there. That all these years, that mind you, this ticket was probably, this ticket had to be more than 15 years old. But for 15 years, that that ticket and this warrant was out for me, the Holy Spirit covered me. Covered me. And you know, I remember getting a speeding ticket one time. And I was down in Pennsylvania. And I got a speeding ticket. And they never mentioned that. They gave me a speeding ticket and, and I moved on. But all this time, the Holy Spirit protected me. Until I got hard-headed. And the Holy Spirit says, you don't realize what I'm protecting you from. And so, though you have a spiritual gift, it doesn't give you carte blanche to do whatever you want. That's, that's my point. My point is, we need to understand that God, he's on the throne. Not me, not you. He's on the throne. And the way God works, you know, kind of funny, like I was sharing with you guys about joking. You know, did you know that the Bible says that we need to abstain from inconvenient jokes? I'm a, I'm a jokester myself, but sometimes a joke is not proper. Um, and we have to be careful, you know, because even like the word of God talks about Elisha, that um, I believe it was Elisha it was, I think it was Elisha, that he had a bald head. And some kids said to him, bald head, bald head, bald head. And he turned around and cursed him. And a female bear came out the woods and ate them. You don't know what you're talking about if you just say whatever's on your mind. One of the things that, you know, Sometimes I'll see people like I was the type of person that if you tripped and fall, I would laugh and then I would say, are you OK? But I'm learning more and more to be careful what you say and who you say it about. You know, somebody comes to your window begging for change. Get away from my window, you bum. Be careful. That might be an angel. And it's one of those things that we have to ever be so careful when we when we talk about, oh, you're welcome, Wendy. <laughs> I love you guys. You know, this is not condemnation. This is just love. And it's just me sharing with you the knowledge of things that God has shared with me and what God teaches us through his word. He teaches us to be ever so careful, you know, um, you know, even even sometimes things are borderline disrespectful. You know, um, you know, it could be like, for example, when you call somebody out your name, out their name. You know, I, I know people who have come to me and and they said, what's up, old man? You know, and they do that jokingly and it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't offend me. Because I'm grateful that I'm old. Y'all see how much gray hair I have? I have a lot of gray hair. And if I let this hair grow, you see how much gray hair I have. I have a lot of gray hair, but I'm thankful because there was a point in time that I didn't think I was going to live past 25. 
So I'm grateful for all the things that God has done. I'm not ashamed of my age. I'm not ashamed of my my age, but I thank God that God has blessed me with a, a reasonable portion of health and strength and still energetic, still do the things I want to do, but I'm not trying to relive my 20s. I'm not trying to relive my teenage years. I'm not trying to relive my 30s or even my 40s. I do recognize that there are things about my body that are slower now. I do recognize that age, with age, comes a lot of limitations. And so as I get older, I'm finding myself using more and more wisdom to say, you know what, there's certain things that I'm, I shouldn't do. There's certain things that, um, that I shouldn't say. There's certain things that we got to discipline myself. Because think about this. Ask yourself this question. How far or how much do you want to be used by God? How much? I know, I know there's some people out there that want titles and you want position and you want power, but do you really want to be used by God? If you want to be used by God, you need to discipline everything you do. How you talk, how you joke, what you look at, what you listen to, what you think about, what you, who you spend time with, who you hang with, who you talk to, who you don't talk to. If you want to God to be using you, and because the word of God says, if you haven't been faithful over a little, who will entrust to you the more? So my gifts are given by God to give me a supernatural ability. There are some times that I'm in my house and the Lord will tell me, a person is about to call you and this is what they're calling you for. And I already know what they're coming for. And so sometimes I'll come to them and say, get to the point. Don't waste time with all the fluff. And, and guess what? I'm not smart. The Holy Spirit told me. And then there's other times the Holy Spirit doesn't tell me. And guess what? I'm still a seer. I'm still anointed. But I'm anointed for service. And I'm serving and I'm a part of the Lord's army. Not Rodney's army. Not Rodney's kingdom. God's kingdom. And any soldier worth their soldiering follows orders. You know, we criticize military people, you know, and, and many of us don't understand the, 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 the burden that they carry. They follow orders. Even when it goes against certain moral codes that they have. And they are celebrated for following orders. But then when they come from the military, many of them become drunks and drug addicts and not really receiving proper care. Because, unfortunately, we want, when you, we want you when you're strong, but we discard you when, we, when you're weak. And the same thing happens oftentimes in the churches. When you come in the church and you have talents and gifts and money and value, Many churches put you up front. But then when somebody has more value and more talent than you, then many churches push you to the side. And they go to the next. And that's unfortunate. But we live in a time where now the, the Holy Spirit is calling on his people. Use your gifts. They're hurting people all around you. If you feel that you are called to teach, don't just say you're called to teach because you want to have a meeting. No, if you're called to teach, show me that you're teaching somebody on your job. Not that you're setting aside Bible study, but that when you're at the water cooler or when you're in the lunchroom and somebody is talking about, man, I don't know what to do with my life. Are you sharing the gospel with them? Or are you caught up in the gossip? Are you caught up in the rhetoric? Because they talk about how their man cheated on you and you know what it is like to be cheated upon. And you say, girl, he trifling. You, you're enhancing their negative emotion and feeling. 
That's not living for Jesus Christ. It's, you have to learn how to bring light. And so oftentimes God will lead me to people who are either about to get divorced or people who are considering divorce or people who have been divorced. And God is showing me, Rodney, show them how to navigate from where they are back to me. And that's my only duty. That's my only duty. I'm not going to sit here and put no billboard on my back and say, oh, Pastor Rodney, the marriage counselor. No, no, I'm a servant of the king. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of the king. And my only desire is to hear him. And if I sin, if I mess up, then it affects my hearing. So I try to, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I messed up. It's about, it's about really coming to the knowledge of who's the Lord and who's the servant. Who really is the vine? And who are the branches? Many of us have gotten that twisted. And we think God is our genie in the lamp. We think God is at our beck and call. We think God gives us exclusive rights to his stories. My friends, God can speak to anybody he wants. Because there is no mediator between God and man but Christ. So, so God doesn't need me to be a mediator between him and people because if Rodney don't be obedient, God can lead them to him by a plant. God used a rooster to give Peter an altar call. God used a donkey to correct a prophet. God used the wind to correct and speak to Elijah. God can use anything he wants. God can use a child. He can use a man, a woman, boy or girl. He can use an old man, a young man. He can use a baby. I know people who have, who, who many folk, many, I know people in my church who I told them, you're wrong. You're flat out wrong. And they couldn't hear me. But a baby in their family told them, God didn't tell you that. And they heard that. God can use whomever he wants. So we got to stop putting this chip on our shoulder just because we're gifted. Just because we have this anointing that makes us something. No, the only one. David said, not unto us be any glory, honor, and praise, but unto you, O God, be all glory, honor, and praise. All we are are servants. And our gifts are given by God to edify the body of Christ, to help the body of Christ become stronger. It's not given to enslave the body of Christ. It's not given to make the body of Christ dedicated to me. It's given to make the body of Christ as a, as a lamp, if you will, to point the way. To walk into a room where there's depression and to bring peace. To, that's why they call Barnabas the son of consolation. When the church was, had intrepidation concerning Saul, who later became Paul. When the church was afraid of Paul, it was Barnabas that consoled Paul and connected him to the body of Christ. It was Barnabas who took of his person and sold his house and his property and started giving in such a great way. It was Barnabas. He was a son of consolation. You know, you had Luke who was given not only the occupation, but he was even given this entitlement, Luke the physician. When you study the book of Luke, you'll find many instances where Luke talks about the nuance, the nuances of humanity. So Luke, you'll hear Luke say words like he touched him or she had a flow of blood or she had this. And he always talked about from the, from the perspective of a physician, the caring for the person. 
And so God has called us into various forms. My fingers bend like this. But it's difficult to bend them the opposite direction. They weren't made to do that. But my wrists can bend this way. And my wrist can bend the other way. And my wrist can turn around in circles. So each part has its own function. And its own limits. So you and I. You and I have our own function, but we also have limits. And so it's because God is to be glorified. Because if we had everything, then we would receive praise. Because we would be a one-stop shop. That's why Paul says, except I would be exalted above measure, God has given me a thorn in my flesh a messenger of Satan to buffet me or I would get too big headed. And so Paul later on said, I glory in my weaknesses that the power of God might rest upon me. He says, we have this heavenly treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And too often I see people posturing and promoting themselves as being the great hand of God. And there's only one great arm of God, and that's Christ. And so, prayerfully, when we go into our next part, and we talked about, we're going to talk about God's willing, the, 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 the gifts, the individual gifts and the, the gifts in scripture and what they use for. We want to share those things with you because many of you may be looking for an opportunity in the church and your church may not necessarily see your gift yet. Also, let me share this before I let you go. It is important to know that you may know you have a gift. Okay? And I want y'all to hear this correctly. You may know you have a gift. But it is God's rule, this is God's will, that the church that you belong to also acknowledge your gift. Your gift is not just for you to say, I got it and I'm going to run with it. No, the church, and we're going to study that next time. The church must acknowledge your gift. And the only way your church is going to acknowledge your gift is if you are using it consistently. Not here today, gone tomorrow. In today, out tomorrow. Not up today, down tomorrow. Not you're faithful today, unfaithful tomorrow. No, we can't know if you got the gift or not because you're not being consistent. And what happened in my life is that... Um, uh, I was consistently sharing the word of God in conversation, on the telephone, through email, through text, through um, uh, postings, you know, on my job. I was working for a major law firm in Wall Street. And those of you who know corporate America, corporate America doesn't allow religion in the office place. But I was being so consistent with what I was doing at lunch, um, in the cafeteria, by the coffee machine, everywhere, in my office, until the manager and partners came to me and said, we want to have a desk in your office that people can come and you can share with them because you make the office place better. Listen, it wasn't me. It was the gift that God gave me. It was the spirit of God at work in me. And then finally, this law firm asked me to teach a Bible study five days a week in one of their conference rooms because my office was too small to fit everybody who was coming. And so you got to be able to use your gift without the desire for a title and a position and entitlement and, oh, I'm somebody. No, do it because you love. Do it because you honor your father. Do it because you don't want to see people hurting. 
You don't want to see people broken. You're not trying to make a name for yourself. You're not trying to build a church. You're not trying to, unless the Lord tells you to do that, you're not trying to do that. You're being consistent. And then when you be consistent, it was my pastor because I was consistently coming to his Bible study. I was consistently listening to his sermon. And every time he called on me to do something, I wasn't sitting there going, no, Pastor, no, no, don't, no, no, Pastor, don't, don't, don't call me. No, 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 Pastor, don't call me. No, no, Pastor, I'm not ready. I haven't, I haven't practiced yet. No, because I was consistent, I was always ready. And so when my pastor would call me and say, can you close the service? I would close the service not trying to make a name for myself, but I would close the service because I was listening to his sermon. I would incorporate his sermon and what the, 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 the key points of his sermon for us to remember. When I was leading prayer and, and he would ask me to close out in prayer, I would pray and I would pray about the things that he spoke about in his sermon because I was there in the room mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and bodily. I was there in the room listening and being faithful. It was then my pastor that came to me and said, I know that you are anointed of God to preach the gospel and to teach the gospel. And he said, do you know this? I said, yes, pastor. He says, well, will you preach faithfully and teach here at this church? Yes, pastor. And that started 18 years of faithfulness in his church. Three years where I struggled a little bit because a little pride was in there. And then 15 years of consistency. And anything he asked me to do, I did. And the Bible says God rewards you according to your faithfulness. So why did God, why was God able to entrust to me to church plant and start a new church called 41 Vision? Why was he able to? Because I humbled myself and became faithful. And many folks, they, they ain't waiting on God. I want to get what I want because I want my ship right now. Okay, well, go, go and build your own ship. Go and build your own ship. You think you got it? You think you're a teacher? You think you're a preacher? You think you're a pastor? You think you're a leader? Go and do it. Go and clean this. Go and do it. Because if God told you to do it, then God is going to bless it to be faithful, to be consistent. God is going to bless it to change people's lives. And, and you're not going to raise a generation of rebellious people. But no, you're going to raise a generation of faithful people to the Heavenly Father. Not to you. But if God didn't tell you, and you go out there and launch out in the deep, then the enemy going to kick you right in the teeth. And that's the truth. And when I look at all the attacks that I've gotten, I know God sent me. Because every attack that comes, God keeps blessing. God keeps blessing. He keeps renewing. Every time somebody says, I don't want to be it. I don't want nobody correcting me. And they walk out. God sends two more and three more in. And he keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. Not only numerically, but um, in quality. People who are serious about the kingdom of God. Not people who are shucking and jiving. Not people who are playing around looking for titles. No, people who are serious. Yeah, I get people coming in looking for titles. And you know what they do? They get a title and they leave. And you know what I say? Thank God. Leave. Go and do what you want to do. You don't want to follow us. You don't want to follow the, the teaching. You don't want to follow the leading. Go and do what you want to do. Nobody's stopping you. The church is not a prison. But if you're here in this church, be faithful. And that's one of the things I stress. All my members know that. I stress faithfulness. Don't tell me my God is not powerful. Don't tell me my God won't keep you and won't supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. But you got to be faithful. You have to be faithful. And it starts with what God has given you. God has given you gifts. Be faithful at it. Everywhere you go, on the bus, on the train, in the supermarket, be faithful. If you have an encouraging word that you want to share to the church, share that encouraging word with the cashier. 
share that encouraging word with that that crossing guard that's on the corner that you pass every day. Share the encouraging word with the police officer that's directing traffic. Share the encouraging word with the conductor that's on the train. Share the encouraging word with the person that's sitting next to you. Share the encouraging word with everybody you meet. Because then if you're faithful, then your gifts will make room for you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this time of sharing, God. We thank you for the, the study of your word and, Lord God, for the revelation that you've given us. And, God, we thank you for every person that you have led to come here tonight and who was able to dial in and to hear. God, whether they heard the whole portion or portions thereof, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name that, Father, you will feed their souls and instruct their lives and bless them, Father, that they might serve you more than they serve anyone else. For you told us to do everything as unto the Lord. You told us to be faithful. For you said the first commandment is to love God with all of your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And you said the second commandment is just as strong, to love your neighbor as yourself. So God, I pray for these children of the Most High God who are gifted, who you have given spiritual gifts to. I pray, God, that you would open up their understanding, and even as we go further into this teaching, that you would reveal to them all their gifts, not from pride, not from arrogance, not from haughtiness, but that you would reveal to them in humility their gift and help them to use it for your glory. Father, we thank you for those who have registered for the conference and those who are coming, Lord God. And even now, Lord God, we pray for this conference, that this conference would be so powerful. Father, we need your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us And that, Father, we don't want to make a name for ourselves, but God, we want you to be glorified and we want your power to fall. When your name is called, prove the doubters wrong, for you're still mighty and strong. Fight this battle for me. Help my unbelief that I can tell all of my friends that you have won again. You're king, you're master, you're the alpha and the omega. And Father, we look to you as your servants, as your children, the children of the beloved. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. Now, Father, as we leave this portion of conversation, we pray, God, that you would commence a conversation between us and your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, minister to our hearts. Show us the way that we ought to take. Show us if there's anything wrong in our spirits. Forgive us of all sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to use our giftings to glorify your name. We thank you right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for coming tonight. Don't forget to share this video with somebody else who you think it might be helpful to. I look forward to God's willing joining with you um, uh, Monday, Monday evening at 8 p.m. to continue our study where we're going to break down spiritual gifts. God bless you, Wendy. Welcome uh, your brother, Willie. Um, Willie, God bless you. Joanne, God bless you. Melinda, God bless you. Edna, God bless you. Chris, God bless you. Kiana, God bless you. Melinda, God, good night. Allegra, God, good night. God bless you. Amen. To God be all the glory. Mia, God bless you. Thank you, Melinda. I will. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Thank you, Kenya. God bless you. Yes, Edna. I'll see you in the morning. 4-1 Vision. See you in the morning. Hallelujah. Don't forget, people of God, Monday is the last day for registering. Uh, not registering, but the last day for getting the discount at the conference. You don't want to pay more. Book your room. Book your room. Monday evening. Is the last day to book your room. 
Peace and blessings to you, Joanne. Lauren, yes, see you in the morning. Edna, see you in the morning. Amen. So don't forget to book your rooms, everyone. Yes, thank you, Angela. The last day to receive the conference room rates, the discount is Monday, September 18th. After that, you have to pay whatever the hotel tells you you have to pay. And this is a five-star hotel. You will pay a whole lot more than what we're charging you. So, please, God bless you, Wendy. God bless you, Lega. Oh, God bless you, Amanda, and your aunt. What's your aunt's name? God bless you from Oklahoma. God bless you, auntie. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Amanda. God bless you, Lauren. Oh, and Amanda, tell Ty to stop laughing. Oh, God bless you. Welcome, Robin. God bless you. Thank you for, for coming and for watching. May the Lord bless and keep you. All the way from Oklahoma. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, I know. I know. I know that tie is funny. You know? Amen. All right, everyone. Have a blessed evening. Make sure you get up early in the morning to go to church in the morning. If you don't have a church to come to, you can always come to 41 Vision at 315 Forest Street in Jersey City between Bergen and Martin Luther King. Our services are at 8 a.m. and we're finished around 10.30 at the latest 11. Um, but we have a Holy Ghost time. You, you'll be glad you came and was with us. And so God bless you. Uh, love you all. Have a great evening. God bless you, Angela, Amanda. Uh, yeah, Ty, I know you love me, man. That's why I bring you so much joy. <laughs> God bless you Amanda put him to bed he needs to go to bed because he needs to play tomorrow alright alright so you guys have a good night I love you all have a great evening God bless